Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to another MediaTek Labs LinkIt tutorial. For more tutorials, technical content, and our active developer forum, please register at labs.mediatek.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install the Linux development environment to develop your own software for the LinkIt Connect 7681 hardware development kit. First, we have to go to labs.mediatek.com in order to download all the necessary files. So we open the browser, we go to labs.mediatech.com, we go to developer tools and resources, link it connect 7681, SDK intro. On the site, you can see you can download the SDK for Linux. So let's do that. And let's save it under the normal download folder. While we're downloading the SDK, I highly recommend to you to download the developer's guide as well. The developer's guide contains a lot of useful information on how to get started and how to use the different APIs to create your very own software. Now the download has completed, let's go to our downloads folder to see the SDK. There it is, we have uh, downloaded the zip file. So there are only a few simple steps we have to follow now to install the SDK completely on our Linux machine. So first we open the zip file and then we have to extract the content to our home folder. So let's go to the home and grab the Linky Connect SDK and put it in our home folder. Next thing is to extract some more tools in the tool chain. For that we open our SDK folder and the toolchain folder. In here we will find the Andes toolchain. So let's double click that. Once it is extracted, I highly recommend to extract it into the home folder under a folder called Andes tools. So we take the content of this and drop it into the Andes tools folder. Once this is completed, we have installed all the necessary SDK files and now we have to make two simple changes to the files. So let's close our extractor and we go back to our home folder. Within the SDK folder, we have to change permission on the source files. So we start a terminal and we go to our Linkit SDK. We then go into the SRC folder and now we have to change permission on all the script files in order to be able to compile our own software later on. We do that by calling chmod 755 and then on all the script files, so star.sh. We hit enter and all the modifications are done. Next thing we need to do is to double check if the path in a compiler file is set correctly. So let's open our SDK again and go to SRC, then MAK, MT7681, and in here we find a file called compiler.mk. So let's open this. In this file, we have to check the tool chains. This is the path where our tool chain is installed. So we see we have here four X's, and this has to be changed to our home folder. In my case, this is home forward slash fill, but this will be your username. So it will be home, your username, and then Anders tools. So please make sure to change that to the correct path. So we save that file and we close it. And now we successfully installed the SDK on a Linux computer. Next thing is to develop a really short and simple application and upload it to our board. The development works very easily. We copy the whole source code of the firmware for the board into a separate folder 
change the source code, compile it, and then upload it to the board. So let's get started. First, we go to our SDK folder again, and we copy the whole SRC folder. Best thing is to create a new folder in our home directory and call it projects. So we open that projects folder and we copy in the SRC folder we just copied. Then we give it a meaningful name like first project. Then we're going to open the first project. We go to the folder called cost and open the IoT custom.c. In there, we will find a IoT cost subtask function, which will be executed continuously after the board has started up. So, as I said, the developer's guide is really useful because we can find a short example on the 2.4. So let's go there and copy out this code. So we copy it and we go back to our file. We find the IoT custom subtask here and paste the code and save it. This code will make the GPIO2 flash every other second. So we will set it to high and then a second to low. So once we pasted the code, we can close the file. So this is all the changes we will do to the source code. So now we have to compile it. This is also happening in the terminal. So we go to our project folder. So we go to projects and then our first project. And the only thing we need to do to compile it is to call make clean to clean the project and then make again to compile it. So make clean and then make. We hit enter and immediately the whole source code will be compiled and a new firmware will be created. This will then be stored in the out SDA folder under a file called mt7681 sda header.bin. So this is our firmware. Now the next step is to upload it to our board. We can do that with a Python script that is included in the SDK. So let's go to the terminal again and go to our SDK folder. So let's locate it in fill, link it SDK, and in there we will find a folder called uploader. In this uploader folder, we have a Python script to upload the file. We execute it by calling Python and then the file name of the file, which is mt7681 uploader.py. We have to configure two things. Firstly, the file name of the file we want to upload. We do that by minus F and then the file name, the full path, which is again home uh, fill and then our projects folder, then first project, then out, SDA, and then the file name, which is mt7681 underscore SDA underscore header dot bin. So this is the file. The other thing is we need to configure where the board is attached to the computer. We do that by minus C, and this is under forward slash def, forward slash TTY USB 0. So when we try to run this, we will run into an error because we don't have enough permission to access the USB board. So we have to run it again, but this time round we add sudo in front of the script so that we have enough permission. It asks us for our password, so we ask, enter our password the script will do its job. It will set the board into recovery mode, upload the firmware, and then reboot it. Once this is completed, we then will see the board um, start blinking the GPIO2 every other second.
Now the upload is complete, we will see the GPIO 2 blinking every second. So this is it, this is how you install all the tools necessary for developing your own software for the Linkit Connect 7681. If you're interested in more video tutorials like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and register at labs.mediatech.com for more technical resources and our active developer forum. Thanks for watching.